Hi everyone, it's Andrew here with another The Week on Stitch. I don't know about you guys, but I've had a really, really tough week. Uh, it's just, it's been one of those things where you just haven't seen to get anything done and a lot of interference and I kind of started to think why, why it was. And actually, we've got some really big reason why it was a terrible week. Hackers. We spent most of this week dealing with uh, a hacking attack against Stitch from it wasn't, they weren't breaking into the system, they were just trying to bring the system down. A whole bunch of uh, bots from around the world just randomly started attacking the system. Don't know if you noticed, but at certain points in the week, the system was starting to run a bit slow as a result. It just, you know, who does this sort of thing? Uh, the Stitch community is out there helping people not trying to do anything bad and, and just these attacks, and they're from overseas, they're from all these different bots in uh, India and Russia and around the world. We've got no idea why it happens, but it means that we have to spend an entire week kind of protecting ourselves against that sort of thing. Uh, it slows the system down for all of our members and, and it doesn't really help anybody. Anyway, it's been a bit stressful as a result. Having said that, we've got a bunch of good things that did happen this week, uh, which I'm pretty keen to tell everyone about. First of all, global groups. So I talked about last week a little bit about um, global groups, the idea of uh, creating groups that allow you to connect with people with similar interest, not necessarily just in your local area, but in your state, in your country, around the world. We call them global groups, but you know, they're, they're arranged, they're non-local groups. So I thought I'd, uh, I'd show you just a little bit about what they are and how people are starting to use them, get you inspired. And we really want to see more people do this sort of thing, because really when you join Stitch, it's to do things with other people, but really it's about doing things and connecting with people with similar interests. So if you've got an interest uh, that you wanna share with someone and you wanna connect with, uh, connect around that interest, setting up a global group is a really great way of doing it. So let's take a look, shall we? So here I'm on the events and activities page, and this is for Sydney, so there's a lot of events uh, that you'll see, uh, but if I just scroll down a bit, you'll see this event here, Stitch Euxter's Virtual Ukulele Lesson from Annie. There's a, a worldwide virtual activity. Now, Annie's actually not in Sydney. She's a member in country New South Wales, inland for about an eight hour drive from Sydney. You, you might have, if you watched last week's video, you would have seen I talked about Annie about to set this up. So here's an here's a event she's got, it's a virtual ukulele lesson. And she set it up by creating a group and it's called Stitch Euxters. So just to have a quick, have a look at, the, at this page here. So this is the, the group itself. She, you can see she's got 15 people in the group and those members come from, as we scroll down here, we've got uh, Armadale in New South Wales, Dahlonega in Georgia, uh, Victoria, England, uh, Nevada, Queensland, uh, Ontario, Canada. It's a really cool example of something that obviously not for everybody, we don't want, you wouldn't want a gazillion people in your ukulele lesson, uh, but the people who are out there interested in learning ukulele, they're suddenly getting together and doing it. Another great example, uh, we've got, if I scroll a little bit further down the page, you'll see here there's one from the Q. In, uh, in Q's uh, one of our members in, and new members in the UK, and Q has set up an event for people who want to talk French to each other. You know, they might have a French background, uh, have a bit of a chit chat, and just keep the language up. Again, not everybody. I mean, I wish I could speak French, but I can't. Uh, although I am learning Japanese at the moment, so maybe I need to set up a, a, uh, a group for people who want to chat to me with about Japanese. Uh, but anyway, the point is, if you are interested in something, then just set up a group. I'll show you how to do that. So all you need to do is jump over here to the groups page. So you see at the top of the groups page, you've got create a group. So if we click create a group, and it'll ask you what type of group it is. Normally it's just a regular group, that's fine. Uh, and the very next question is, who is this group for? And you can see it can be a group for your local area, but you can also choose your state or region in countries that have states, uh, your country or the global stitch community. So if you, if you don't really mind who you're connecting with, it doesn't matter where they're from, as long as they share the same interest, set up a global group. From then on, any events that you post into that group can be seen by anyone around the world, provided that event shows up at the right time for them. So Annie's uh, upcoming ukulele lesson 
probably falls in a time that suits maybe her in Australia and maybe a bunch of people in America. Uh, but if she held it later at night, it might be suitable for people in the UK and so on. Uh, if you're doing it in your same state or same country, obviously those things don't matter because everyone's roughly on the same time zone so that everybody can see the events. That's it, it's that simple. So as I say, if you've got an interest, set up a group. Let's just get it happening. We wanna see as many of these as we, as we can and start posting those events and activities and you get lots of people coming to them. That's great. Of course, you can put a limit on how many people can attend because for a virtual event, you don't want too many people. Totally up to you. All right, next thing that happened this week that I think is worth sharing, put a fair bit of work into republishing the community rules and guidelines. So the community guidelines can be found now on the Stitch Support website, which makes it easy to find. They used to be on our public web page, but no one really knew how to find them. So if you just go to Stitch Support and you can search for rules, guidelines, whatever you want, uh, and you'll see that we've, we've done a lot of work. I've been working on a project with a bunch of our Stitch champions to define how we not only define the sort of behavior that we don't want in the community, but also mechanisms that help promote the sort of behaviors that we do want. Uh, we've done some work about reporting behavior that breaks the guidelines, and you're about to see some things rolling out in the next few weeks, uh, hopefully, that help encourage people and reward them and just recognize them when, when we're doing the right things and creating a positive, supporting, welcoming community for everybody. So highly recommend going and have a look at the guidelines themselves. So you'll see um, we've got, uh, we lay out the, the core values, but then we talk about what are unacceptable behavior and also, which it goes without saying, um, but also the sorts of behavior that we discourage. And I'm gonna focus a little bit on this um, in upcoming uh, in an upcoming video, uh, probably not a weekly video, but, but something just so you can help understand what we're trying to do here. Because what the community is trying to build is something that doesn't really exist on the internet. It's an online environment that ensures that people behave civilly, and with respect to each other, no matter who they are. We can have differences of opinions, but we need to make sure everybody feels respected and welcomed in a community. It's as simple as that. It's very hard, it turns out it's a lot harder to do online than you'd expect, because people don't always behave the same way online or interpret things online the way they do in, in person, but we're really committed to it. So that's, that's something to keep an eye on in the coming weeks. We've also, as part of that, updated, one of our members helped us with our um, some articles around what constitutes sexual harassment and stalking, because again, we want everybody to feel safe, but also we need to educate people about, you know, what's acceptable behavior, because not always, uh, not all members understand it, uh, but we have a very non-compromising approach to what's acceptable. And basically, if you're going even anywhere near uh, making anyone offended, upset, uncomfortable, it's just not welcome on Stitch. Uh, so please have a read, interested in the feedback. Let me just go to the discussions page and I'll just show you how this works out in practice. So here I am on the discussions page and you'll see, oh, let's just pick one for example, a, a, a recent discussion. This one's pretty popular about online dating. Um, if you see a, a comment that you think doesn't comply with the guidelines, then we really want you to understand you have a role in reporting that comment. So you can see here, there's a little, um, a little button that you go more and report comment. And what pops up is a dialog box that asks you why are you reporting that comment? Uh, and it highlights what the community guidelines are and you can choose the breaches, the reasons that this particular comment has breached the guidelines. Uh, you might choose uh, people are just perpetuating or provoking conflict with each other. You know, that happens on a lot of websites. We don't want it on Stitch. You provide a short justification about it and hit submit. That comment will be hidden immediately from the community because we found that leaving it up there just provokes and inflames the situation and it allows a small number of minority people to make life bad for everyone else. So it gets hidden straight away until Stitch gets a chance to review. Once we review it, we get to determine whether it did breach the guidelines or whether it didn't. If it did breach the guidelines, then it's removed permanently and there's an escalation process that the person who did the comment goes through. And if it's bad enough, they get expelled from the community. They first get a warning normally, but if it's really bad, then uh, you know we take action. Again, we're, we're uncompromising when it comes to this sort of thing. On the other hand, if you are found to have reported a comment without justification and, you, and you're really doing it to abuse the system, then there's consequences for that as well. Again, we've learned that without feedback and without consequences, people can behave badly 
online without fear of repercussions and, and actually that's really bad for the 99% of the people who are doing the right thing. So you've all got a role in helping us, uh, helping us improve the community as a result of, of this. We started with the online discussions, but we're gonna be rolling all out of these features into uh, groups, activities, events, even one-on-one -on -one discussions, because again, we want everyone to understand they've got a responsibility to behave in a positive way that enriches each other's, uh, the lives of other members every time they're interacting. So you can help us out with all of that. If you've got any questions, uh, please let us know. We'd love to hear them. All right, that's it from me uh, for a, a bit of a brief one this week. Um, let me know if you've got any questions and hope to see you next week. Bye for now.